Welcome in to another episode of Why So Sidious, a nerd podcast where we analyze and discuss all of the latest nerd fandom properties coming out there, whether it's TV, movies, books, or comics, we're going to cover it all. Uh, joining me today to cover the fifth episode of the Ahsoka series on Disney Plus are my two co-hosts, Jeremy and Caleb, but also our very special guest joining us from way down under is Lee from Lights, Camera, Rant. Welcome in, Lee. We're stoked to have you with us today to discuss a hell of an episode. Pumped to be here, guys. I'm so excited. Love it. Hell yeah. Love to hear it. So, Lee, we've had the pleasure of joining your show before. Um, I forget. It wasn't all of us. I know at least I was on. Um, I think it's we, just you, Dave. Was it? Yeah, so, it was I've had you. the pleasure of joining your show before. <laughs> Uh, but this is our first time getting you uh, to be in, you know, our neck of the woods here. So since our listeners may be unfamiliar, uh, maybe not, maybe they've listened to our suggestions and have already given you a, you know, a listen, but I want them to get a feel for you in the podcast. So just give us a quick breakdown who you are, what your podcast is all about. Uh, well, I'm Lee and I'm, I'm pretty very similar, very similar to you guys talk about movies, TV shows, video games, Marvel, DC, the whole everything. And Dave, you came on for, I think it was for Across the Spider-Verse. That was... That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. And God, that was, that was such a good movie. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we got to do new episodes every single week and go live every Sunday. And usually it's just me ranting for about 45 minutes because I'm by myself. <laughs> Yeah, that's nice, a dude. that's a bold bold strategy. You got I'm mean, not bold strategy. It's bold of you to do just because when I've tried to speak by myself, you know, I struggle a lot. So you you pull it off pretty cleanly, you know, you rock your own thing over there. Um so shout out to you for being able to do that. Thanks, man. The only thing is like I'm the only one who laughs at my own jokes. <laughs> it's perfect. You can set them up perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> you won't even see them coming. Nah. You know, it's just a little game. Uh, exactly right. <laughs> Doesn't matter how bad it is. So, real quick, what, what made you start it up? What what gave you that little boost to just say, you know what, I'm going to start a podcast real quick? Well, I think like a lot of us, you know, with COVID, lockdown, all that was mm -hmm. open here in Australia and Victoria was either um, your supermarket or your bottle shop. So, I was like, well, I can't leave the house. I can't do anything else. I might as well start a podcast which started off with a $50 mic and me just in my garage recording about six drinks down. So, you know, this is fun, <laughs> which led, uh, led to all this. I think the first uh, 10 episodes, I'm not sober for any of them. And, yes. <laughs> uh, and then after that, just kept going. Um, you know, it was just a lot of fun. And so far, it's been such a great experience to meet guys like yourselves um star wars podcast earth 894 mm -hmm. i'm just like looking back and i wish i had started this sooner totally yeah the community is really great with all this podcasting yeah. and the social media stuff those who don't want to just hate on everything right because <laughs> there's that side of it too <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Uh, great community yeah mm. and you're you got like what 800 subscribers now over on your youtube page i mean you seem to be growing pretty quick over there as well and wow congrats. um 868 because i Ooh. have a youtube clock on my desk to remind me every single time to um which it should be behind me but it's in front of me but uh yeah i i made a youtube channel when i first did my podcast but i didn't do anything with it until probably this time last year, I was like, I probably should really grow that. And I've just been pumping out shorts, trying to make more content. Um, and so far, yeah, really close to hitting that uh, 1K. Nice, man. Wow. Well, you jumped up like 60 something in like two days from when I saw your last announcement. Yeah. So you should be hitting that in no time. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks, so, man. hey, it's... if you're listening out there, go over to his page real quick. Hit him a subscribe. Lights, camera, rant on YouTube. Get him up to a thousand. Do it. But you have to do, you have to obviously subscribe to you guys first via. <laughs> no, no, no. Just yeah, take it. <laughs> you're, you're more of a priority at this point. We're, we're rocking around like 92 right now. <laughs> we got a ways to go. But... Which should be a lot higher. You guys nail There's... it with every single episode you guys make. Oh, thanks, oh, man. You. 
<laughs> JD's been pushing the YouTube thing. I haven't done much to get anything onto there, but it, it, we we were late in getting to that. Um, so yeah, well, we got to get more of a presence on there. But JD's been definitely been endorsing, pushing for that to get onto YouTube. So yeah, we think we're we'll just going to put our full full episodes on there, no, just yeah. unedited. Throw them on YouTube because can't hurt. Yeah, I I highly recommend it, especially with now that YouTube are bringing in more of that podcasting aspect mm. so they're even right. looking to last i read they were looking to add in an rss feed oh, oh okay. okay so when you upload an episode it'll automatically go on youtube oh, nice wow. okay so yeah might as well get that present going then if that's the case that, shit. a surprisingly high amount of people actually listen to long form podcasts on youtube for some reason mm. it's weird right i do to me that's not the first place i'll go for some reason. Yeah. Same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, it's good to know. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah. Beautiful. Well, hey, let's get into it. Uh, I know we all can't wait to dive into this fifth episode. It aired on Tuesday. It is Saturday right now. Um, so we're itching. We've all watched it multiple times. So let's get into it. The fifth episode titled Shadow Warrior, directed by the legend himself, Mr. David Filoni. Um, before we jump into it, just a quick reminder, check out our previous coverage of the Ahsoka series, usual weekend geeks and our most recent episode Oppenheimer and our top five Nolan films in the same episode. And we're nearing that official 100th episode. So stay tuned for a fun episode packed with top five lists and whatnot. Uh, we'll let you know uh, the closer we get to it, but yeah, we are getting to that milestone Holy and shit. we got a new episode covering all the green lantern background and history and dc comics i worked hard on that i'm proud of it and i think That's it's pretty right. good and it'll really cover you up on a lot of the green lantern background so uh check it out it's our last novice nerd that's right jd yeah, just it. popped that up for us yesterday i think so yeah it's, it's good and ready to go you're gonna need to know those lanterns are gonna come into play soon so you got to get mm -hmm. that info and look at you now you watched ahsoka you didn't watch our study guide you know breakdown for rebels and the first episode you were lost so Get ahead of it. Get prepared. Uh, All right. And always follow us on our socials, Why So Cities Pod, Instagram, TikTok, and X. Do it. So let's move past this drabble and get to why we're here. One of, if not the best live action Star Wars episodes we have been blessed with, in my personal opinion. We'll get everybody's take in a second here. We'll wrap off a summary for you. This love letter to fans of the Clone Wars opens up with Hera landing on the planet Satos looking for Ahsoka and Sabine, but only finding Hu Yang. We then, see, we then see Ahsoka in the world between worlds facing her former master Anakin Skywalker, played by the one and only Hayden Christensen. After he informs her she lost a fight, he begins what he calls her final lesson and ignites that glorious blue bladed saber and begins to fight Ahsoka. Meanwhile, the New Republic want Hera to report back and continue to show themselves as incompetent. Hera won't leave until she finds Ahsoka and Sabine, and just before giving up, Jason Sindula hears lightsabers clashing in the ocean. Hera listens to her son's intuition and orders the X-Wings to skim the ocean surface. Back in Imagination Land, we find a young Ahsoka, played by Ariana Greenblatt, realizing she has been dropped in the middle of the Battle of Ryloth, an episode from the first season of the Clone Wars animated series. A younger Clone Wars Anakin leads her into battle, and we see the clone troopers we know and love. Along with Captain Rex, play the trumpets, he has returned. We skip forward to the Siege of Mandalore, a battle we see in the final arc of the Clone Wars, Season 7. After some more discussion, Ahsoka calls Anakin out for what he will become, and an annoyed Anakin ignites his red lightsaber. We get dark side peak Anakin Skywalker facing off against Ahsoka, including some of the most memorable cinematic shots we've gotten from Star Wars. Ahsoka defeats Anakin, chooses life, and is visually baptized by the waters of the world between worlds, before returning to the land of the living and being found by Hera and the X-Wing crew. Ahsoka the White has risen, and she has an idea on how to find Sabine and Ezra. Taking inspiration from the biblical story of Jonah, Ahsoka decides to follow the whales. She communicates with the big one, gets themselves a ticket on the Purgle Express, and after the useless New Republic get out of the way, Ahsoka and Hu Yang are off to find Ezra and Sabine. Hopefully, at least because, as Ahsoka said, she has no idea if this will actually work. So, insane episode. Uh, we're all caught up. I want to ask you guys a couple quick questions. I know everybody's probably itching. Um, without getting too far into the episode details, go around the horn. We'll start with our guest, Lee. 
Is this the best live action Star Wars episode in your opinion? Did this surpass Mando season two finale? Did this surpass any other live action episodes for you? A hundred and freaking percent it did. As soon as I finished the episode, my first thought was like, this is freaking Star Wars. This is what Star Wars is. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I really liked Andor, but this, this was Star Wars. We got lightsaber battles. We got beautiful landscape shots, great transitions. Um, again, deep and meaningful between a master and apprentice and it was just at the end of it i was just like holy it's pretty fucking good it's pretty good it's pretty good it's pretty good (laughs) but and i feel terrible for anyone who hasn't watched this like i've got a couple of friends who i was like oh i don't know much about ahsoka i haven't watched i'm like no i messaged him straight away i'm like you're missing out doesn't matter if you haven't watched anything just watch this Mm. yeah have to yeah. It's All been right. tough for a while because oh, yeah. I think people are starting to lose a little faith in Star Wars. So I bet you a lot of people would have watched this show three years ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. True. But, but I think word yeah. of mouth will pick it up and it'll it'll pretty much catch up to where it would have been because it's so good. This is going to do it. People are going to see yeah. promos of Anakin Skywalker, Hayden Christensen, and be like, what the hell are we <laughs> missing? Like, this is mm. going to do it. Um, they showed it on a promo on Thursday Night Football, I think. It showed an Anakin promo TV spot already. It was like, yep, that'll do it. Okay. That was in the theaters. That's right. I know. I wish it was near us. That would have been so cool to go see in theaters. My goodness. Oh. Well, JD, since you uh, were speaking on that Star Wars and people losing their faith, what's your answer to this? Is this the best live action episode? I, I want to say yes. And the only thing I would say no to is the Obi-Wan finale. But then if you consider all the other cutscenes with Reva finding Luke, it just doesn't make it. Um, so I, this is the most satisfying from start to finish. I mean, come on. And you know what I loved about it is they didn't, like, right after the Anakin, spending a whole episode, like, we're on our way to Thrawn and Ezra at the end of the day anyway. Hmm. Yeah. Fighting and the stuff like that. Um, they get right, right back up. to the story. Like Very it's efficient. Not a big use of the time. Like it's not a big detour. Caleb, or it's... did it beat the season two finale? I don't know. It's hard. I think it did. <laughs> I f- but at the same time, I feel bad for casual fans out there because there's a lot of, you know, this is like MCU phase four stuff. You know, like you, you have to have done your homework to uh, really appreciate seriously. this this episode. Mm. You yeah. know, and everything that Ahsoka and Anakin went through and, you know, everything Ahsoka has gone through since then. You know, and to bring her to this, you know, Ahsoka, the white character. So, yeah, I mean, I think it is probably the best just because of Dave Filoni, you know, being George Lucas's apprentice and, you know, right. really knowing Star Wars more than anyone else. There's always two, a master and apprentice. Yeah, no more, no less. Hey, when's the last thing Filoni actually was directly involved in? Well, he's been Mando. He's directed episodes of Mandalorian, like Mm. Ahsoka's episode, and I think he did one in season three. That's the last time we saw him directing as Mando, season two? Mm -hmm. I think he did one in season three, too. Did he? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Okay. Like one of the Bo-Katan episodes or something, right? Probably, right? Like the main flashback one. Yeah, Yeah, I think. It's about time. (laughs) Give this man the Uh, reins. Yeah. Yeah, he worked on the 4th and 7th, I think. Dave Filoni on the 4th and 7th, something like that. So, anyways, yeah, yeah, he's been he's been around a bit, but I mean, this was a whole and so so Caleb going back to your answer, it's almost like it comes with an asterisk. Um and right. that asterisk say if you've seen Clone Wars and Rebels. Yes, <laughs> like, like, exactly. I have seen videos of people being like so say you haven't seen Clone Wars and Rebels and you're just going, who the hell is this Ezra dude they're looking for? Right. Where is Ahsoka right now? Why is Anakin back? What? Like, yeah. who's Hera? Who's who's Kane and Jarrus? Who's this Jedi they're talking about? Like, none of it makes any sense if you haven't seen Rebels and Clone Wars. And, and, and it's hard for us to gauge how well they set it up because we already have the pre-existing knowledge when we're watching. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to be like, you know, I don't know how well they set it up for new time viewers, but... It definitely yeah. requires some watching. Yeah. Who the hell are all these people? <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> like, uh, 
Uh, he's this weird little force sensitive kid. He's this yeah. green haired Oompa Loompa looking guy yeah. walking around here in lightsabers. Um before we get into specific uh, events, though, shout out to Kevin Kiner, uh, the composer. Holy crap. The score to the season oh, yeah. has been miles better than the majority of the sequel scores we got during combat scenes. Uh, the sequel's best scores were used in the trailers, let's be real. But Kiner mm. has managed to make the intense lightsaber duels more emotional with his use of the score, which is something Kenobi could have used with some of their scenes. It was kind of lacking intense score there. Um, okay. Oh, wait. You're, you're talking about sequel series, right? Yes. Okay, you said like the sequels, so like well, thinking... even the sequels themselves, the no, the ocean water, the ocean water, they played Duel of the Fates. Somebody did that edit, and the Kylo Ray fight was ten times better. With oh an yeah, emotional mm-hmm. score playing. Like, I didn't, I didn't vibe with the score as much in the sequels, in my personal yeah. opinion. Well, Rise of Skywalker has the weakest score out of the three. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, you're right. You're right. They, they were Force silent. Awakens had some dope ones, right? Oh. That's yeah. It, it was the waves were just crashing while no they were fighting. Yeah, there was nothing. No. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Well. You need you need a good score for emotional tones, and and Kiner's done this, and he also did Clone Wars season seven, that emotional score okay. where Ahsoka buries Ooh. the clones. That's Kevin Kiner. Okay. So this guy just does a really good job of bringing in new Star Wars sounds, but using like you know motifs from John Williams scores. Like a couple of the times, Duel of the Fates was in one of these scenes in this episode, but yeah. remixed a little bit. There were there were notes of it, but he's just killing it. So I want to shout out him. <laughs> And it's only because Ludwig's too big time for him now. Yeah, apparently, man. <laughs> Oppenheimer. I know. Yeah. Can't come back to Disney now. Okay, so there's a ton to be said about this episode. Let's get into it. Anakin and Ahsoka in the world between worlds. Um, can we all just take a second to acknowledge Hayden Christensen and how amazing he looks? Not only the Clone Wars, but in his, you know... Revenge of the Sith, a baby all the way. I mean, dark side I, Anakin I with all of his limbs, baby. except for his arm. But, I mean, it was just, God, we, we had Hayden Christensen back. It was amazing to watch. Uh, just thank you, Filoni. I, I, I was a little Any bit worried. Oh. that Anakin Skywalker's... Sorry. <laughs> um, uh. I'll start over. I didn't need any reaffirmation that Anakin Skywalker was my favorite character in fiction, mm-hmm. but like somehow this episode just pumped that back into my memory. Like, Oh, like this isn't a question. And it's not like he did anything like it was a spectacular performance and everything, but it's not like it added anything to the character specifically. It's just that here we are in 2023 and he just made one of his dopest appearances ever. And then, you know, you go back and watch those videos when people hated him or in the early 2000s. And the look on his face was just pure defeat. And it, it's, it's heartbreaking. But then you go yeah. watch the current, the modern things where everyone is just cheering him mm. on like he's their king, dude. And you could see the opposite, like the pure like, happiness in his face. And it almost brings me to tears just watching that. And then you see him yeah. just drop a bomb in this new series. It's, it's so cool man yeah lee what do you think about hayden's return i i thought it was fantastic i was i was gonna admit i was a little bit worried what he like the de-aging thing because at the end of the episode episode four I was a little bit worried how he looked i was like yep. are you gonna look like that through the whole episode but <laughs> when it started like it was great to see him back. It was great. It's like he hasn't missed a beat. As we saw in his lightsaber fights, he still did the spin. It, yes. And I almost probably enjoyed his performance in this or probably a lot more than Obi-Wan. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, it felt more like him, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And again, totally. I love seeing those TikTok videos where he's showing, just as you said, like all the hate he got in 2002, but all the love he's getting right now. He's well deserved. George, yeah, George made the best call. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well deserved. I mean, um, yeah, yeah, totally. Mm. Mm-hmm. He got mm-hmm. ripped too. Probably not as bad as Hayden, yeah. but he still got ripped too. Um, yeah. yeah, no, totally. I love seeing it, and I love both of them. Hayden and Andrew both seem like pretty chill guys. So, yeah. Is it, do you guys find it weird? Like, you know, in the past two years, we've seen you know 
Hayden Christian can come back. We've seen Tobey Maguire come back. We've seen Andrew Garfield come back. Hugh Jackman's Wolverine's about to come back. Like yeah. all these major legacy characters. Yeah, they're somehow handling it well, though. Like yeah. they're not botching these characters. Even Luke's return in Mando season two was handled oh. so well, mm. where it's like they're they handling these legacy characters with such finesse, and, which is amazing. Normally, you know at least before these last five years, they would botch it. It'd be a, a cheap cash grab and it, no, they've been actually really hitting. Mm. Right. But of course, nostalgia always pays and you it know, does. they are semi running out of ideas. So let's, you know, bring back yes. the people they love. It's easy. You know, it's easy. It's easier to get, have. A, it's easier to be successful if you have nostalgia and you, and you do it the right yeah. way at the same time. That's so, true. I think this is one of the better ways they have used nostalgia, though. I would argue hmm. the amount it grew Ahsoka, the main character of this series, it grew her arc. This brought her to her final form. This was massive for Ahsoka. Like, she needed this. So the fan service nostalgia points was used in a really effective, you know, reasonable way. It wasn't just throw it in there and, you know, get the money. And they used it really well this time. But, yeah, it'll always be the case. I won't, you know, I don't, I'm not. I have no shame about No Way Home is probably a top three MCU movie for me. And it's cousin nostalgia. I don't care. I loved it. Like, spoiler yeah, freaking right. scene. Oh, I said probably. Tune in for our top five list later. <laughs> <I was> gonna say. <laughs> um, but, dude, the saber work, too, by Hayden. Like you said, he had his classic behind the back twirl thing there that he's so famous for. He does it in the Obi Wan duel. There were a couple little moves that mimicked the Obi Wan duel in Revenge of the Sith, but. He just he he moved so well. They changed it a little bit. It wasn't the back flippy prequel stuff that we got in the prequels, but it was more of a slowed expertise samurai style combat to it mm -hmm. rather than the prequel. But I love that because this show again has so much Japanese tone samurai style going into it that it really worked in the hand movements, everything going on. I mean, and I can't help but think his presence on set is improving the all around lightsaber play of all the cast because he's such an experienced, you know, veteran in this, that he's probably helping everybody, giving them tips, how to look more realistic. Yeah. Like, Cause this show has been the best lightsaber action we've gotten since the prequels. I mean, it's past the Kenobi show at this point. We've had more, in my opinion, lightsaber work, pure lightsaber work. It's, it's surpassed it. So I got to think Hayden's a reason for that. Straight up. Yeah, yeah. Lightsaber wise, stunt yeah. use with all that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> there goes the cape. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just cut his cape in half. His arm just popped uh, out of socket. Like yeah. that seems like a robot chicken skit. <laughs> it yeah. does. Oh, they should do that. They should, somebody write Seth Green. <laughs> Get that on a screen. That's hilarious. I never thought of that. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh. Is this... Okay, sorry. It, talking about Anakin. Is this the conscience of Anakin after Vader? Oh, we lost you, JD. We're going we're gonna to press through, oh, but you'll oh. pop back in. You'll pop back in here, JD. Um, no. Yeah. Very, I almost thought that. But at the same time, he does make a scene where Ahsoka's like, I'm not going to fight you. And he's like, I've been told that before. And that's what yes. Luke said to him. Exactly. And so, so I'm guessing this is the whole, his whole past, present, everything. That's, okay. yeah, I got that too, that it was the Luke thing. You know, he's, I, I've heard that before. But I also was thinking, okay, but every other thing he's doing makes it seem like the Anakin we know from Revenge of the Sith. You know, it's almost like he's not acknowledging the full, I don't know, it's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that line, I think Obi-Wan said that to him too, like, I won't fight you. So I think that could apply there too. But it was, it was almost word for word what Luke said. And I've heard that. I took it as a Luke reference too. So yeah. I'm, I'm confused at who this is. Love, what are you, what are you thinking with this? So I do have a, I have a theory, a couple of theories. I, the, I like the, he's the father of the force now. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's the balance the, between the dark and the light, and he kind of runs this world between worlds. Right. Because he, he isn't a force ghost. He doesn't have the blue energy around, you know, around him. But 
what if it's the wills so of course this was george lucas's original sequel trilogy um plans where he was going to have them and i know dave and him have worked together before on kind of things where they're kind of the force itself like god in a way in star wars Mm -hmm. they taught qui-gon how to become a force ghost they were the ones who kind of sent the destiny of the chosen one and maybe they're putting her through a test kind of finish finishing her training because at the end you know there's there's hope for you yet so maybe it's Mm -hmm. like the force itself in this world between worlds kind of finishing her training and you know turning her into ahsoka the white mm. wow gain of the gray i it's our gain of yeah, the white. I, right oh 100 <laughs> percent. i want to get into all the parallels with gandalf she had in this episode but i really like that so it's almost like this may not be any portion of anakin maybe even so this is yeah. just the force knowing this her block is when she she learned that Vader was Anakin, she's been messed up ever since. She mm-hmm. hasn't been the same. She helped the Rebellion. She helped Ezra, all that, before she learned that. And then she got stuck in there. Ezra saved her, but she went back through that portal. So that has been her hang-up. And you could tell she's not the same happy-go-lucky Ahsoka we know from the Clone Wars. She's gone through some stuff. But it's, it's almost like this... Shit. Oh, God. But this this force entity, it's like they knew this is the only way to heal her. This is the mm-hmm. only way. To, this is her final lesson. It needs to be her confronting Anakin, confronting that Anakin did, in fact, turn into Vader, but that she can still press on, live, and then it doesn't define her. So, Because, th- yeah, it seemed they were running her through the flashbacks, and then eventually it, it's like it figured out, oh, you need dark side, Anakin. That's what you need. It's not war right. that has haunted you. It's me. Right. It was what Anakin did in your life. So... I could see that not even being Anakin at all. That would be a trip, but it's true. I don't hate it. What do you think, Lee? Yeah, I, I, I felt like it's like I could see how that could be the case as well. I felt it was very much almost like a step before heaven because he was very much, do you want to live or die? Do you want to mm-hmm. die, be the rest with us, and just end everything here, or yeah. do you want to live? Like because he keeps saying that even when she says I'm not going to choose, he turns around and goes incorrect. You have to make a choice. Mm-hmm. Right, um, <clears throat> which I saw thanks to TikTok. Some of his theories, like, is this a world which which Anakin, when he died, did he see Obi Wan here, and did Obi Wan help him to become a Force ghost? Huh. Right. Like, is this cool like your step before Force ghost? Jedi purgatory? Yeah, yeah. purgatory. Yeah. Jedi purgatory, <laughs> and you're. you're it's like the Kree. Whoever they see as their role model is the supreme intelligence. That's what's going on with the Jedi thing here. Whoever you see as your, you know, role model, your idol, and it's 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 That's so right. interesting. It's so open. It's so open to interpretation right now because um, they never even said world between worlds. They've never no. said those words in this show. That's right. just Rebels fans knowing that. So they really haven't committed to anything. It could, there's no guarantee that was Anakin or even a force dose of Anakin. And that's, I'm, I'm still rooting for the father theory. Honestly, I think that would be cool. Mm. I think the father theory with Ahsoka becoming the daughter, I don't know who's going to be the son, uh, but I just think that's an awesome thing that really works for me. So we'll see. They might not get that crazy, but. And, and you don't have to always explain everything. Like things get Mm kind of messy sometimes when you do that. So, just have an amazing scenes, tell a great story at the same time, but don't try and explain who Anakin is and, you know, get into all the details and the, you know, just let it be. And we can talk about it and theorize and maybe we'll never know. And that's fine with me. It's, it's yeah, true. Same. There's a wonder to never knowing, you know, cement yeah. in cement what the actual answer is. And it's how things used to be until we started, you know, making projects that fleshed everything yeah. out and gave us answers. Yeah, but... there'll be a book about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, before we move on from this scene, I just wanted the, the, the cinematography again. Whoever did the cinematography in this episode, I think I wrote her name down and I forgot it. Um, but my God, the shots that we saw in this and Anakin's blue blade, Ahsoka's white blade. Literally, the pattern of the bridge they're standing on was blue and white. Like, it all just was a perfect balance. Uh, It was just beautiful. Anakin cuts through the bridge, continuing Vader's pattern of destroying stuff around him for an advantage in his duels and stuff. Anakin always doing that. Vader's throwing crap at Luke all the time. They just love destroying stuff around them. But hell of an opening scene with them. My goodness. 
Um, and please don't put the picture in my head on Empire Strikes Back when Vader's tossing those boxes <laughs> at Luke <laughs> and they're like bouncing off of him. <laughs> Baseball swings. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. Oh, right. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I was just saying, the in the like the landscapes, the trend, those um, those flashes between Anakin and Darth Vader, those Crazy. were just awesome. I saw someone post the other day. It was like this shot alone is Star Wars. Yes, I don't know, in no context, dude. And the and the explosions setting it off too, where mm-hmm. you know the explosion changes yeah. him into Vader, and then the explosion yeah. changes him back. It's oh, perfect. It was just so well done. I mean, good lord! And we got so much out of this. So I want. I got another question for you guys. Um, there was a big rumor before the show that we would see Mustafar redone, but instead of Obi Wan, it would be Ahsoka facing Anakin on Mustafar. And then about a week or two before the show dropped, there was rumors that they cut the Mustafar scene. So it kind of seems like maybe that final scene with. Anakin with the red blade was maybe stepping in for the Mustafar scene. I don't know. Um, but let's start with you, Lub. Would you have preferred to see the Mustafar scene? Or are you glad they didn't do it? Uh, yeah, I'm glad they didn't do it. That's kind of a sacred moment that they're, yeah. they shouldn't go back to. And yeah, but I feel like that was definitely in between. Like, you know, maybe he pushed her back. They went to Mustafar and then they ended in the world between worlds. They yeah. kind of just cut that whole middle part out. Hmm. So, yeah. I, I'm glad they did it. They did. They could left it out. JD, what about you? Um, I would have preferred Mustafar if it was a real fight, but since it was like a extra dimensional fight, definitely prefer it in the world between worlds. Right. Like like she yeah. finds a portal and she sees, you know, like the Anakin and Obi Wan fight about to start, and she kind of steps in or something, and mm-hmm. then that starts to fight wild. Anakin. That would be that crazy. Would be, that'd be nuts. That'd be Sick. Wild. What about you, Lee? Uh, I'm not disappointed we didn't get it. I'm not disappointed we didn't get the the Musafa scene. Like I feel like everything we got was was great, but I would love to see which dream. You know, if they ever do make a Disney What If series, I would love for one of those episodes to be if it was Ahsoka. Totally. Because and even in animated or live action, I would love to see that. Yeah. I'd almost rather see it in animation, honestly. So I'm with you guys. I'm actually relieved they cut it because that's peak Star Wars for me. I mean, that scene is just the best of the best. It's perfection. And I don't want a series that has to work with the TV budget to have to to, to redo it and try to imitate it when we know they are not going to recreate it to the same quality. So I think it was a good call too. Just don't even, just don't even. It was great what we got. Don't try to recreate perfection, you know. Yeah. So, what are you laughing at, bro? Sorry. You look. Yeah, he goes. Who's doing dishes? I was like, it better be my wife. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> That's a joke. I'm not like that. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. (laughs) Oh, man. Okay. So we didn't get Mustafar, but we did get the Clone Wars. Uh, JD, we haven't started with you yet. What did did you think about returning to the Clone Wars in live action? (sighs) Um, I loved it. All right. So one of the coolest things... um, Was it was a really small scene, but did you notice when Ahsoka looked at that clone? In her eyes, it's like the enemy, right? That's her present memory. Like the clones wiped out the Jedi, so she sees this clone and it faces him, and that's it's like in her eyes, this thing's probably going to try to kill me. That's what she's used uh, to. Yeah. But then it turns around and says, "Come on, let's go!" And instead, it's on her team. So it's like, oh, that was a cool moment because she looks tense. She looked at him and she's like, "Uh oh." And then right, instead, they just kept, I didn't even kept pick going. up on that. Yeah, because she yeah, does that. say, "Oh, th- this is the Clone Wars." And Anakin's like, yeah, yeah. No like no yeah. shit. So she, she did at first think that probably. And um, it showed how gritty it is. It really felt like a war, yeah. you know, all the smoke yeah. and the the, yeah. the 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 shots, the bullets. And Ahsoka's literally like, I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. It was intense. Um, and it, it yeah. and then you see Anakin walking into the smoke towards the enemy with all the clones following him, and it's it's intense. And it was definitely the grittiest feel to the Clone Wars I've, I've ever seen. 
Mm. Straight up. Rogue One vibes. Big Rogue One yeah. vibes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, the clone space being wrapped up, you know, and Ahsoka's holding his arm, and she's heartbroken. Because, again, so we I talked about this in our Novice Nerd with Ahsoka, but she led um, a part of the mission on Ryloth, and she went against Anakin's orders, and she got a bunch of clones killed. And so this was a big moment in her life where she had to accept that her mistakes cost lives. And so oh. in that Ryloth episode in Clone 1 back there, she made a mistake like that. And so... It's almost like, again, this force thing that's guided the ghost of Christmas past is guiding around to regrets she's had in her life kind of deal. Like that massive thing was huge for her on the, the Battle of Ryloth. So it's it was just very interesting that we got all that. And I just I thought it was great the way it was done. People complained about it being in the volume. That was smart. It's a dreamlike state. Mm. Um, you know, you, we don't want the whole thing. The focus is Ahsoka and the clone and Anakin. The focus isn't the battle. So we don't need to see everything. We don't need the budget to be spent on that. Use a smoky dreamlike deal. Cover up a lot of it. I thought it worked great. But mm. Lee, Clone Wars, what did it do to you? I, I Like very yeah. much. Like I got really big Rogue One vibes in it. I loved it. And I didn't mind it was... On the volume, like I, I, I didn't even think twice. It's like, okay, it's a dream state. It's amongst everything. You know, it's how a war scene would be. And the fact when she's sitting and with the clone, the clone grabs her hand. It's very reminiscent. I mean, these were all friends at one point. Like every, right. and everyone knew each other. And then obviously seeing General Anakin in the outfit. Oh I was like, God. amazing. Like, like, David, you son of a bitch, you did it. <laughs> you got us. <laughs> um, and oh, I, forgot, I forgot her name. That girl that plays Ahsoka, like, she Rosario she nailed that. Dawson? Yeah. No. No, no, Ari- no, 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 no sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah, Ariana <laughs> Greenblatt. Uh, young yeah. Gamora. Yeah, Young Gamora oh. and in Barbie. Oh, I heard that. Yeah, and in Barbie. She's yeah, the kid, yeah, yeah, the daughter. Yeah, yeah. Nothing like uh, your first three major roles or a billion dollar franchise. <laughs> yeah, right. Good lord. That's uh, crazy. Good start. Yeah. yeah. Um, but with her, I didn't, obviously watching, you know, Clone Wars, when I saw her, I thought, I was like, wow, she actually was really young. Like she's yeah, that was, young. Yes. Right. Right. When this is all happening. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's what I was telling Caleb. I was like, she looks way too young here. And then he's like, well, she's only like 16 or 17 at this point. And I was like, you know, it was like a five-year gap from Clone Wars Season 7 to what we saw before. So it felt like she should be way older. But then, yeah, you realize she was 17 and she kicked Maul's ass twice in that battle. Mm. Like, Mm. holy crap, she is a force to be reckoned with. That's insane. It's a lot of blood in your hands. 16. (laughs) God. Yeah. And when me, Dave and I were watching together, it was like, oh, my God, it's the Clone Wars. And then like, oh, my God, that's not Rosario Dawson. That's like a younger version of Ahsoka. Yeah. It was just mind blowing to see that. And she killed it. So if there's no. ever another, you know, or even just like a one hour special of just young Ahsoka, bring her back to do it again. She was amazing. Totally. She, she killed, it. knocked it out of the park. And I, I think a, any of yeah. us who have been that young in front of Anna, uh, Hayden Christensen, like, oh, you're going to fight him. I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God. I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to go home, man. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> oh, <cool now. laughs> I'm not a youngling. <laughs> we got the same view, by the way, when he ignited that saber the first time. That was the same view as the, the younglings when he ignites the blue saber oh, from the corner God. there. But... Youngling uh, Slayer 3000. Dude, <laughs> I I do have to throw a complaint in here. Uh, I know we're pl- oh. praising this episode like crazy, and I'm you know I'm I'm all for this episode, but there were a couple nitpicks I have. One of them is the lightsaber action. So it was great, it was great. But when Ahsoka is hitting the Maul Deloreans, you know the the loyal uh, Mandalorians to Darth Maul, when she's doing her slashing and everything, it's just not like the sequels. You know the sequels. Bad time to start whining, Louis. Uh, the sequels, it's CGI. They use that foil rod. And so they're cutting through the droids. You can see it. Love mentioned it. The impaling and everything. It looks more realistic in the sequels. 
But every time she slashes a clone, it felt like she was hitting it with a plastic sword. It felt like she was smacking it with the clone, but we weren't seeing it pierce the armor. The only one that looked mm. realistic was she spun on her knees and then impaled that guy through the stomach. That was dope. But yeah. the slashing thing just doesn't work as well as it did in the prequels for me. Beskar. Mm. That's fair. Yeah. That's, That's fair. Because that was not against droids. Save the day again, love. Look Wise. at you. That's two nitpicks, Wise. two back-to-back episodes you've explained. You son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. Oh, God. Wise and handsome. <laughs> oh. That was muted. Uh, you guys got anything left on the Clone Wars aspect before we move on? I do have one thing about... Um, how they're you know they're trained in war times. They're no no longer keepers of the peace, and that really mm. shows again how the Jedi lost their way. They were turned into war generals. They weren't following the way of the Force like Qui Gon was trying to tell them before he died. And this kind of shows again about how they were just lost in this war, trying to you know keep the P- Republic together and not following the ways they were taught. It's all Palpatine, right? Yeah. I mean, he's exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Ex- yep. Led them on down that path, and somehow they ate it up. We're doing good, right? We're doing good. We're still good. <laughs> nope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> our couple, our couple Jedi's left. We'll see. Hopefully, Ray becomes yeah. way cooler. Nah, nah. I like Ray. <laughs> well, skin our own movie. I know. They should let Dave, Fil- Dave Filoni needs to direct that thing. Right, you should yeah, direct everything. Let him take on. anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like everything. Years literally old, no, every option. Get out of bed. Get out of bed. We've got mm-hmm. a Star Wars yep. movie to make. Like mm-hmm. I saw something on the internet the other day. Imagine if Dave Filoni was in charge of Ray for the sequel trilogy. Like the char- like the character we would have gotten out of that trilogy if Dave Filoni was the one developing her. Yeah. Probably would have been a lot better. <laughs> yes, hundred <laughs> percent. And I still like Ray. I'm not a Ray hater by any Same. means. Like mo- like all of us on this Fuck pod, but. On. Yeah. She would be on Ahsoka's level if, you know, Dave Filoni had it. Yeah. Right. 100%. I actually, I actually think Ahsoka would be still cooler just because of the whole Anakin. Uh, yeah, that's true. Backstory. That's true. She'd mm-hmm. probably still take Ray. Ray solid though. Yeah. We probably would have got more, um, more clone. Or, like, we probably would have got a lot more of all this in the sequel trilogy. Yeah, flashbacks. Yeah. And stuff. Flashbacks or just... every, everything we're getting now. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, all the Star Wars stuff, right? It would feel more like Star Wars. Hmm. Dude, and while, while we're talking about Ahsoka and Rey, by the way, so we had a live stream up at one point when we were watching, and Ahsoka defeats Anakin, and people are losing their minds. They're like, Mary Sue, Mary Sue with Tano. Like, how are you going to defeat Anakin? Going off, and it's like, do they not understand it's a lesson? First off, this doesn't mean that she is better than Prime Dark Side Anakin. Yeah, this is yeah. a lesson, uh, first off. But secondly... If any of you are listening out there and thought, this is Mary Sue-ish. Ahsoka's way too powerful for being so young. Well, I just, you know, you don't even deserve to really be addressed, but I'll feed into the trolls for a second. But she's had seven seasons of character development in Clone Wars. She's been in Rebels for multiple arcs. She has her own novel. She now has her own series. That's not what a Mary Sue is. When you explain how badass she got over that thick of a catalog, Mm. that's not what a Mary Sue is. I don't people it just blows my mind and it, somebody posted something like oh so Ahsoka can do all this at 17 but we get have a problem with Ray you know defeating Kylo Ren at 19 and blow I'm like, it's not the same thing yeah it's it's just not even close to the same thing I don't see how people are seeing it that way but Ray Ahsoka's not a Mary Sue in a war <laughs> at 15 years old <laughs> yeah, yeah Ray wasn't the, sorry. trained as a toddler like uh, wild surround by more <sighs> Jedi masters as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a, a, a list of things that is just a dumb comment. So. Mm. <laughs> really dumb. Really dumb. Oh, Thanks a lot, dude. Whoever you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you for uh, letting us talk about this. <laughs> All right. So let's jump into the Red Blade. I mean, I just never thought we would get Prime, Dark Side Vader, or Anakin Skywalker. I never thought we would get that. And the cherry on top when he kicks her through the smoke. And he does a little, almost the Henry Cavill where he loads his fists, almost kind of yeah. loads his shoulders with the saber and it shows Vader for a second. 
scary first off the score amazing but then he goes you lack conviction and it sound mixes vader's voice with hayden christensen's when he says it and it's just one of the hardest moments in star wars right there i just and you get the the vader breaths right when she goes through too incredible so i'm assuming all you guys this worked for you guys prime dark side anakin skywalker same on screen loved it absolutely loved it and i love that even ahsoka's eyes changed as well mm-hmm. like so close Wait, was that not just the saber being held up to her face though i couldn't really make the distinction i the first time i saw it, i thought it was her eyes being red I think the it's second the time yeah. I was like, that could be the saber. But I think regardless, it was the moment for, you know, her decision. It was either R- strike right. him down or right. choose life here. So they kind of showed that, you know, that flash there. But yeah, it could be, yeah. Uh, could you be know how she's she's kind of known as a gray Jedi or before this anyway. Yeah. So choosing life or death was pretty much choosing the light side of the force or the dark side of the force. Correct. Pretty mm-hmm. it's, it's a way. Yeah, it works. Because when she returns. She's all Gandalf the White, right? So that's her fully going. She's no more. She's not a great Jedi anymore. Like she's full no. on. Yeah, that's no. She was baptized. That's what like took. the water literally rose over her, and she came out on the other side, and all white, mm. totally different mood. Um, and also mm. just like Gandalf, she fell off a rocky cliff into waters deep below, which is exactly what happened with Gandalf in the Mines of Moria, and they had to defeat a beast of some sort to come out on top and return in all white pretty much exactly what ahsoka did there so there's always been parallels between ahsoka and gandalf that That. filoni has made he has he has a sketchbook from a few years ago actually and it's a picture of gandalf and ahsoka and gandalf is saying they thought i was dead too look how that turned out and so he's had this planned out for years on end he's got sketches of all these different aspects of ahsoka's journey apparently and we, you know, me and Caleb were talking about it. That would be awesome to see, to get to see those sketches. Like, yeah, yeah. Just that, get that book, dude. Talk about nerd octagon. I'm throwing Vader at the Balrog now. That you said they both had to fight. <laughs> Vader a, at the they Balrog. They both had to fight a beast. Ahsoka's <laughs> beast was Anakin. And I'm like, all right, uh, I'm probably yeah. taking Vader over the Balrog. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Oh, um, it. actually, never mind. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um. Any other things other than the incredible cinematography of this last Ahsoka Anakin scene before we move on? Uh, I did see I did see one thing um, that someone did uh, on TikTok as well, which I thought was really interesting. Someone did a parallel between cho- choosing life or death when uh, Ahsoka's got the blade to Anakin. It very much so is obviously she chose to live and not kill Anakin compared to what Anakin did with Dooku. Same thing, had the blade in his throat, but he chose death. Yeah. And I was like, Do it. I guess yeah. it does help not having an old old bastard in the background <laughs> going, Do it! Go on! <laughs> Coward! Yeah. <laughs> Your son would do it. <laughs> no, that's that's a so, there again. So many parallels in this episode, but used in the right way, and that's totally right. Yeah, because that pretty much well, the Sand People, I guess, started his descent, but that was another major milestone for Anakin's descent was when he took Dooku's head there. Yeah. Um. Before we move on from Anakin, we're gonna talk about Ahsoka the White and the Purgle and whatnot. But before we move on, apparently, there's theories out there that Anakin is not done in this season. And that reason is because we heard dialogue from him in the trailers that we have yet to hear. Now, I didn't look into it too much, but I do know that we heard the dialogue in the trailers from that episode of Tales of the Jedi when he's training her. And he says, you'll fight more than battle droids in this war and blah, blah, blah. That's straight out from the Tales of the Jedi training episode. So I don't know if that is the dialogue they're speaking of or if there's more. But have you guys heard anything about this? Except on that trailer. No. Oh, sorry. Okay. No, when it comes to that. the story, I would like to be done with Anakin. I, I think, think so too. we need these last three episodes to be about Thrawn, Ezra, and Sabine. Like, there's not a lot of time left if we go... Unless Anakin, like, maybe there's some, like, words or, like, a force ghost. Maybe at the end of the season, once Ahsoka's accomplished her 
feet, you know, or fully, you know, a maybe she off. saved. Yeah, a little sign off. Mm. To, but besides that, I don't want to kind of keep going back to this. Like, it was great how it was. Let's not overdo it. Lee, you mm. had something? Oh, no, I was just, uh, I was, I was going to say, I haven't seen anything extra about the trailer from the extra voice. But I could very much see if, like, the final fight scene, if she's, like, in a really difficult situation, she hears Anakin again. Not actually sees him, but just hears his voice. I could see oh, that happening. That's true. Uh, where she's, like, really struggling, and then, you know, and she's like, you'll find more than just droids and blah, blah, blah. But you're right. I don't need to see Anakin again. All the, all, all the Jedi are in you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rise of Skywalker. That, that that could that could that could be a thing for sure. Um, that's I mean that happens in Star Wars all the time. You're going up against somebody, and your master speaks to you from beyond the Force and motivates you to do what you need to do, and you come overcome the enemy. She's still got to have a rematch with Balin, so mm. maybe that comes into play. We'll see. Well, there's, only, but, there's only three episodes left. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so we got Thrawn. Like Caleb said, we still have Thrawn and Ezra to get to, even though this is the Ahsoka show. That is a major part of it. They've already set it up, so we need to get something coming from that. Um, hmm. I will say, people complained about that a lot, actually. Like, this is just a Rebels continuation. Why did they call it Ahsoka? Like, we're barely, we're focusing on Sabine more than Ahsoka, but this episode right there just flipped the switch back. It's well, like, no, this two. is the Ahsoka series. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. well, we just got Ahsoka the White. This is the Ahsoka. Yeah, they Sabine needed. wasn't in it at all. No. I know a lot of non-Rebels fans don't like Sabine. I don't. That's blame them for what we've yeah. seen. <laughs> That's kind of me. Straight up. <laughs> and you're a Rebels fan kind of, aren't you? You still well, don't like her. Not really, though, because I no? haven't even been able to finish the whole thing to this day. That's right. Okay. I, can't, I can't get into it. I don't think I'm a big Ghost Crew fan, and I'm sorry. To all three of you, I apologize. <laughs> but no, all right. get him out. Of here. Get him out. Something of here. about him. Kick him out. Kick him out. I can't invest into the group as a whole. Um, so okay. yeah, I think that's the reason I can't get through Rebels. Because the only, when I like Rebels, it's when Maul shows up, Vader shows up, the Ahsoka scenes are cool, Thrawn. Yeah, that those are when I'm invested in the episodes, um, not Ghost Crew stuff. Fair enough. That's fair. Enough. Yeah. Don't blame you. They don't blame you. Uh, oh. Sorry. I, I, do, oh, you got some? Sorry, sorry. Um, but speaking of that, this show just showed us that they could be how good it could be without Thrawn anyway. When I was looking forward mm-hmm. to this show, because of Thrawn, because that's what made me like Rebels. So I'm like, okay, we're getting Thrawn. I'm going to like this show. No right. Thrawn yet. Fantastic show. So they can carry their own story without like this huge villain. That's awesome. Yeah. I want season two so bad. Please give us more oh, for a movie. It might not come till 2094, but I would like it too. Yeah. At this point, it strikes. Wow. <laughs> Well, that that's a big thing. Like, that's well, that's besides the strikes. But I mean, like, is Thrawn only going to appear in like two episodes, and he's going to be the big bad for Dave Filoni's movie? Yes, I right. think that's yeah, very likely. Yeah, because where else is he going to be brought in unless they do Ahsoka season two? You know, or Mando would... season four, maybe. Yeah, Could... and who else would be the big bad worthy of a movie? Well, yeah. no, yeah, it's going to have to be Thrawn. But yeah, yeah, I would just like to see more. Palpatine's more Thrawn. returned. I swear Again, to God. Is. Somehow. <laughs> That's what I was saying. You got to do a, a Netflix Defenders show where you yeah. just do a Star Wars version of the Defenders and just yeah. get everything ready for that Mandoverse movie in one season. Because so you know good. Star Wars is limited. Yeah. That, that is. Mando, Boba, bo yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. yeah, everyone. All four. There you go. Have and go fight the hand. Crew. Well, yeah, which we don't even know what's going on there. I think that, that's but that's both the... spo- that show. See that that's lining up with the rumors we talked about. Remember when we were talking about the skeleton crew rumors about how it takes place in another galaxy in the great oh, beyond, right? So skeleton crew might be taking place in this other galaxy that they're traveling to, which will tie into whatever's going on in the future. Holy shit! Yeah, that's true. A lot of possibility yeah. out there. We really don't know how this season is going to end. Like we don't. I don't at least. No clue where they're going with it, other than setting up the future. But I I got one last question. Sorry, I know I keep saying we're gonna move past Anakin and we are, we pretty much have, but no, let's talk about him forever. Who <laughs> grabbed her? So when she's fighting Vader in Rebels, 
Ezra is the one who pulls her out into the world between worlds from a portal. So Ezra had to open that portal to get into there. But the reason Ahsoka was able to come through is because Ezra grabbed her. I'm and you know, it might just be one of the things they don't answer and we move on. And if they do, that's fine because what we got was awesome. But I'm just curious how she got there. Did Anakin's spirit, did the spirit of Anakin like pull her through a portal as she was falling off the cliff there? I, and maybe again, I'm thinking too much into it, but I'm thinking if this is the world between worlds, how did she get there? Maybe we're just changing the rules. I don't know. Uh, no, nobody. Dylan didn't check. I'm, Dylan I'm on an island. Happy. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't know. It, that that kind of leads into my theory, though, about where, you know, he's I mean, he has to be either the father or this is the force itself, the will you know, is. training her like yeah. there's something deeper going on that took her to the to this realm. It's not just a portal. It's something bigger. Mm. Up. You um, there's a guy named Superhero Cuts on TikTok, and he has a few theories. One of them is that Anakin is like a force god. Is that right. what you were just saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, basically. Mm. For sure. So that, I mean, yeah. that gets deep, man. Yeah, possible. Right. But then again, you know, I don't really want Vader to be a god. Vader is Vader. You know, he doesn't need to. No, I, I think status. it would just. It's not actually him. It would be him it's, taking on the form just to connect with Ahsoka because that's what she needs yeah. to overcome. But it wouldn't actually be okay. Vader. Um, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. Um. So Ahsoka the White comes out. She's looking dope. Love her outfit. I think it looks awesome. Looks way cooler than the all gray. Um, and mm-hmm. she's happy. Very, very smiley Rosario mm-hmm. Dawson. Uh, so all those people hating on her about not being the Ahsoka we knew, maybe they'll you know keep it down a little bit because she is more happy. Uh, she's less conflicted is what it is. She is Ahsoka the White. She's at peace with where mm-hmm. she needs to be, what she needs to do, who she is, where she wasn't before. And it's super cool going forward because... Even the best Jedi were conflicted. Even Yoda wrestled with the dark side in the Clone Wars. Mace Windu wrestled with the dark side. Obviously, Anakin did. Obi-Wan maybe a little bit when he wanted to, you know, have a baby with Satine. Uh, (laughs) That was probably the extent of the dark side. And he probably wanted to kill Maul after Satine was killed. But anyways, they all wrestle with the dark side a little bit. But it's like Ahsoka is at that point where she may not have that issue anymore. She may be the only one who mm. has no conflict with the dark side anymore. Cause she is a hundred percent at peace with everything. Ahsoka, the white mm. pure, you know, so it's going to be interesting going forward, how much she's changed, how much Rosario Dawson's acting changes going forward in the next episodes. Mm. I like that a lot. <clears throat> that yeah. does put her in the conversation with more of the Obi-Wan. It's like pretty close to being mm-hmm. as good as you can get. Yeah. And she can talk to whales now. Which is probably the best skill she has, in my opinion. <laughs> I would love to be able to speak to whales. I don't know. I mean, shoot. A hyperspace travel. Uh, that was pretty dope. I like that scene. What, uh, mm. Lee, what did you think about that scene? of The whales showing up and her pulling the Jonah. I thought I thought it was cool. I like. I feel very much like Hu Yang. Uh, Hu Yang was like, oh, where are they going? Uh, they don't know. What? <laughs> we yeah that was so funny <laughs> i don't know <laughs> what uh, yeah what yeah, sorry uh i liked all that i liked how the fact that they need those whales nearly took out the uh all the ships too <laughs> yeah get out like, the way boom hang on carson's the unsung hero look i'm gonna tell you but you're not gonna believe me <laughs> i love him <laughs> i love him <laughs> Like his his reaction to the Jason thing, where he's like, "What the hell are we doing?" Yang's like, uh, "His dad was a Jedi. He has abilities." There's just a pause. Okay, cool. <laughs> like, cool. All right, <laughs> here we go. But I, I freaking right. love that guy. Jason yeah. asks, uh, "You have a you have?" He says, "You're gonna train me? No, but you have a room. Yes. So you're gonna train? <laughs> no. No. Like, <laughs> you know, you know how to build a lightsaber? Yes. Will you build me one? <laughs> No, <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. just super nonchalantly. No. Yeah. Oh, so well, I guess real quick. Uh, good God. Uh, oh. Theory out there. So <laughs> I'll try to see if I can struggle to get this freaking sentence out. But in Mando season three, we see Grogu in the ship with Din Djarin and we see Purgle flying alongside them in hyperspace. And Grogu reaches out to them and senses them. And so there's a theory out there saying that Ahsoka and Mando season three rung concurrently with each other. And that was actually Ahsoka. And he was a, he was sensing Ahsoka with the Purgil when they flew by him. I think that's a stretch because it's a large galaxy for them to be in the same hyperspace lane at that point. 
but it's kind of a cool thought. I don't know what do you guys think. Hmm. I like maybe it. The, maybe a hyperspace lane in the force. It's like easier to text the force in a hyperspace lane or something. I don't know, but uh, it's not that that would be irrelevant in any way. But when I saw that, I right. thought it was just pretty cool. Yeah. Mando and Grogu in next episode. Heard it here first from Dave. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> but when you put but when you put it like that, space is kind of big. It's probably not what happened. <laughs> Yeah. It's interesting. But I mean, no. what are the odds of seeing Purgle in a hyperspace lane? That true. You know? That yeah. too. Yeah. Below 5%, I think. And that was at the end of Mando season three, right? When they're like taking no. off? That was like no, episode the... two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's pretty sweet. <laughs> um, Caleb, I'm going to go to you here. You're a big uh, Caleb Doom, Jane, Jane and Karis, Kane and Jarris fan. So we get Jason Sandula, his force abilities. Uh, it really seems like we're tapping into this kid's story here. So I want to ask you, I want to ask all you guys, but will we get projects that follow Jason after this? And do you want to see that? Would you want to see Jason's story and his journey as a Jedi followed through, Caleb? I do. I don't know if I love this child actor that's playing him, but... I do. I would like to Sending see death threats already. Wow. This could, <laughs> Jesus, this could be Dave Filoni's. You know, he's had Ahsoka, obviously, but this could be his live action Jedi that he could build up, and he's starting now as a child, and then maybe in the Mandoverse movie he's a teenager, and then you know mm-hmm. down the road we get this trilogy where Jason's the main character, and Dave Filoni is treating him at you know as his Luke Skywalker. So I would like that to see if if it's Dave Filoni tied to Jason, which obviously it would be. See, so yes, the answer is yes. Okay, all right, <laughs> we got one. Yes, all right. Hey, I like it. We want to hear the reasoning. Lee, what about you? You curious? You interested? Um, do you not care about this kid? I I do care. I do care about the kid. I didn't mind the kid actor. I was like, yeah, cool. We just like it wasn't overly like it didn't think you do a bad job. For a brief yeah, second, I'm like, hates what? kids. It's fine. <laughs> That sounds like someone else I know. Uh, <laughs> um, but Vader. Vader. Um, <laughs> but I do. I did like how he could hear the waves. Like no one else could hear it, but only he hear. It. Well, at a brief time, only he could hear it, and everyone's like, "What the hell are you? Well, you can't hear anything. What are you talking about, kid?" Um, but I could very much see him teenage. Him being on the forefront with Mando, Bo-Kan, Bogotan for the movie right at the front. Oh, yeah. And I want to get into that listening a little bit more. But, JD, what about you? Do you, do you care about this kid? or? Um, I liked him in the episode. I don't want him. I don't want any... Okay. Cause that, means <laughs> that, means, that means we're staying in this era. Why do I want to follow another Jedi from childhood and see his growth? And um, then that just leads us to Kylo Ren, you know, the, the same era. Well, but he's only like, he's like, what, 18 years old when the, no, maybe like tw- no, mid, we, low, early 20s when the sequel trilogy goes on. We're like 22 years away from the sequels still. The sequels happened 30 years after Return of the Jedi. So he would be like 30 something. Uh, Was Jason or maybe even. Yeah. No, he's not in the sequels. Well, who are you? He's, talking he's about? on the ghost ship. He's talking about Jason. He's just saying how old he would be when that time period came uh, okay. through. If he's oh, ten okay. now, he would still probably be like thirty-three, mid thirties in the sequels. Yeah. So he's yeah, probably dead. I'm, I'm even cool with going back. Go ahead, Lee. You're good. Sorry. Oh no, I was going to say, and and in, t- in that time frame as well, at some point, Ahsoka's going to die too. Yeah. No, yeah. she's already old. <laughs> yeah, she's pushing it. Um. Okay. Um. So about oh. that, the... go for it. <laughs> Are we still we're still on the New Republic kind of part? Yeah, that's gonna be next. Oh, okay, go ahead first. Then. No, just gonna finish the Jason thought. Um. So you mentioned he hears the lightsabers over the ocean, right? So that is a very specific force ability that we have actually seen before. It's called Theron Force Listening. And they Theron. can l- listen through the force. Yeah, Theron, I don't know, T-H-E-R-A-N. I've, I've only briefly heard about it, and who I've heard it through, we've only seen this once before really talked about, and it's in Jason Solo, the son of Han and Leia, and the Legends oh. materials. He has this oh. ability, and it's the same no name, way. same spelling, too, by That's the way. Crazy. Jason Thank spelled you, the same way. And, a goat. 
yeah, he's kind of bringing it back. But Jason Solo has a pretty dark history, whereas yeah. Kylo Ren goes to the dark side. Jason goes and he stays. He turns into Darth Cadus, I believe was the pronunciation. Like that. And he is dark. <laughs> like that kid does Damn. some stuff. So if we're going to fall that, I'd be, I'd be kind of down for a Jason um, Solo type follow mm. where we watch this kid go to the dark side and go more into Sith teachings if we we're going to. But overall, I'm with you, JD. I've been voting to get out of this era. So I understand well, it. You know what would be cool is if he actually becomes like a super old, wise Sith. So you could do it 100 years later. He's, he lives longer because of the Sith powers, and he becomes that villain you're talking about. Then you could get past this era, but you've developed him as a kid. And then all of a sudden he's a Sith villain, like mm, 80 years palpy. later or whatever it is. That, that That's a one thing I think they could do with it. That'd be cool. Okay. But I wanted to talk about the waves. Um, I, well, I just want to say I really liked those wave scenes. <laughs> no, but cool. when they're sitting there doing the whole lightsaber thing um, and the sound is crashing with the waves, that's creative. Like that's really mm -hmm. creative. And um, it really brings you and it gives you that mystical sci-fi feel, right? Star Wars is known for. Yeah. And the whales too, the whales. Mm. Um, the waves and the world between worlds, this whole thing feels sci-fi and, and more mystical than a lot of other Star Wars. And we've been missing out on that. So that yeah. was, I didn't 100%. think I would really like space whales, to be honest. But even them, they felt it felt like an adventure. It's, we, working. it's, it's an action. We kind of the genre is action adventure. We kind of lose sight of the adventure part of it. And um, this had a cool sense of adventure for a lot of scenes. Straight up. Mm. Yeah, it, it gets me every time when a Jedi like is in tune with the force and they just kind of slow down and focus for a second. Kind of when Ray mm. at the end of Force Awakens, you know, when she's, you know, when Kylo's like, you know, I can teach you. I can teach you the ways of the force. And she's like, the force, you know, and just kind of slows down. Force. Yeah, the same thing, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. But so do you think Hera heard the lightsabers? And like, I think we're, you know, Sabine, I accepted in a way her, you know, like slightly being force sensitive or trying to be in the ways of the force. But Hera being able to hear the same thing as her son, unless he's like transmitting the sound to her. Or something. I I'm feel like we're him. going too far now. If she actually heard it. I was hoping she didn't actually hear it. But it really did seem like she reacted. She did. Like, mm -hmm. oh, wait. She did. Like, not just, oh, my son has the force. Like, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Lee got that too. So I, I I prefer they don't do that. It makes it less mystical. If everybody can just hear the force happen. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, right. I actually what? didn't get that at all. I, I saw a mother trying to, like, force herself into the moment and see or hear what her kid was seeing. So, and, oh shit, someone's in trouble downstairs. <laughs> Jason! <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think I made my point. Okay. Well, I hope that's the case. I would much prefer mm. she didn't hear that. Like, I don't want everybody being able to just force listen. What the hell? Yeah, like we just talked ability. about how it's an incredibly unique ability. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. let's not have everybody have Everyone it. Everyone can hear it. Yeah, exactly. It makes it a little less special. Um, mm. But so like you said such a yeah. creative scene. Sorry, yeah, just such no, no, like, no. such a beautiful scene and something different again, different to what yes. we've seen previously. Yep. Yeah, goes back to the same thing we we've been saying in the earlier episodes. It feels like new and fresh, but it feels like Star Wars, and that's all we can ask for really mm -hmm. and you throw in hayden christensen i mean good god <laughs> uh let's talk about that useless new republic you know that it was just absolutely incompetent useless bags of garbage floating around the galaxy making everybody's life worse letting the freaking first order rise what in the world uh you know let's all bag on them real quick but the one cool thing um we got a cool cameo not a cameo we got a cool easter egg when homeboy shows up he goes, Senator, Senator Organa says she can only give us cover for so long. It's like, oh, Leia, oh, yeah. look at that. So That's Leia right. knows who Hera is. So that that was kind of a cool little connection there. But um, just the mention yeah, what, was cool. What, yeah. Mm. What, what do we think about these scumbags? Uh, it seems like useless. I'll say, useless. It Captain seems like Tiva. <laughs> Captain Tiva. That's all I'll say. He's their like yeah. main dude, right? Get yeah. that guy analyzing data or something, man. Yeah. So he should be coaching special teams. He looks seems like he's like a main damn pilot. <laughs> <laughs> he's a football coach, but he's special teams. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. But yeah, they suck, and I really don't um, like Captain Tiva. So 
Oh, I love oh. Captain Tiva. I thought he was dope. Me, man. Get that oh, guy man. on data analysis. <laughs> I was like, special teams is an insult. I, I thought he... <laughs> no, no, no. It was meant to be an insult. All right. I think yeah. Carson Davis is dope. But... Do you think data <laughs> analysis was not an insult? I thought that was awesome. Is that not what we're striving <laughs> for? No, I'm probably. just playing. But um, that kind of seems like I would prefer uh, more pilot action. You know, there's no characters in the Republic that's good to follow for the audience, except um, Leia and um, Mon Hera. Mothma. Meh, Mon yeah, but I'm, I'm not a big Hera fan. I'm just saying, and just, and they are New Republic too, huh? They, they are the the boots on the ground soldiers, I guess. I, I think we could use another, a couple strong characters, like strong Republic pilots, just side characters for a couple action scenes like that. Someone like Tiva, yeah. except maybe way cooler. <laughs> don't even I will not take this Tiva slander. I know, I don't even, don't even get me from. started on Mon Mothma, all right? <laughs> when you said the some about the New Republic, I just pictured Tiva for some reason. I was like, "You know what? Yeah, they the New Republic sucks." Right. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> but bro, Mon Mothma. She's more worried about votes than the truth. Like in Andor, mm. You know, this is obviously 20 years after, 15 years after Andor. Andor, she's a young, up-and-coming politician. Now, she's comfy. The Empire is over. She, her, you know, her double life, she doesn't have to live that anymore. Gone. She's comfy. And, you know, she's not really fighting for the truth like she was before. That's what I kind of got from this. Like, you know, I can help you out, but, you know, things are different now. And so, yeah, she's a politician. She wasn't even willing to help them unless Hera gave her definitive proof in that moment. Yeah, that so Morgan was there. Yeah. No? Okay, well, I can't do anything then. Like That doesn't seem like a or, uh, one of our heroes. No, but even in that scene, in that in the, when she had the whole cancel, she seemed more concerned than the rest of them. She seemed like she, she partially did. knew, like, I want to do more for you, mm -hmm. but I can't because obviously everyone's here, which I was half expecting her to be like, you can go do the mission, just don't tell anyone. But obviously, right. we haven't got that. Yeah. Well, and it's it's the complacency thing, like you said, Lub. Uh, Yoda was complacent, uh, and that's how they the the Jedi got complacent over hundreds and hundreds of years without the Sith, and the Sith returned because they got complacent. They weren't paying attention. They were clouded by the dark side, yada yada. But they were complacent, is what the case was. And so, yeah, you know the new Republic gets complacent. And what do you know? The first order comes back within three decades of their Boom. victory or less. Actually, it was already established by the time we see it in force awakens. So who knows when the mm. first order really takes back over, it could have been sooner, but yeah, they, they just got nice. It's not in the book. In there. What's that? It's not in the book. When a first order takes over like one of the book Which trilogies. Book? Oh, uh, like, it, like not force after awakens? no aftermath or, Oh, Oh yeah. One of those, I read right? those trilogy. I Isn't that kind of first That's order the stuff? Aftermath trilogy, then, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or uh, Cat? No, not Catalyst. I think it's Aftermath. Lee, have you ever yeah, read any of the Star Wars books? No, it's it's like okay. on my list to read. Audiobook, I would suggest. Easy yeah. to do it while driving. You get John Williams' score playing in the background. Uh, it's oh pretty, yeah, it's pretty nice. Ooh, we'll never say real no. quick, if you had to read a Star Wars book right now, and it'd be the only one you would ever read for your life, you'd have to pick one. <laughs> oh, shit. So, Shit. Well, I, well, you guys are the perfect. If you're familiar, perfect, 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 what would you tell me to read first? Plagueis. Plagueis. Okay, there you go. Yeah. What did you well, say, that's JD? Like the, that's Revan. the most referenced one. Straight up. Well, JD's fresh off of Revan, so he's feeling it for sure. Well, but you did yeah. say that's your like favorite one now. I think or I Air literally hopped to number one, yeah. Or Heir to the Empire, which is the original mm -hmm. sequel trilogy written in like the '90s. Ooh. Thrawn's first intro. Timothy Thrawn's Thrawn, intro. Yeah. yeah. Luke, I would Han, say in this, Leia. In yeah. this day and age, I'd actually go with the Thrawn origin book. Okay. Over Heir mm -hmm. to the Empire just for this day and age because he's coming and yeah, that's that canon. makes sense. It actually plays into everything. Yeah. Heir I'm to the Empire is great too. Down. I'm writing all this down. There you go. Take notes, Lee. And uh, yeah. so can, come next month, I want a book report sent to my DMs about <laughs> what you thought of the book. You have three days. <laughs> 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 just the airpod in everywhere i go yeah <laughs> just just smile and nod smile yeah. and nod um all right so unless you guys got any other new republic uh statements to make 
We'll just uh, open it up to final overall thoughts. Anything you got left? Um, and I would. Were you going to say something about New Republic, JD? Um, I was considering issuing a public apology to a uh, one Captain Tiva, but I'll just skip that. <laughs> <laughs> just stand strong. Stand strong. Watch him be a douchebag next episode. And you can tell everybody. I knew it. Yeah. Never liked the guy. Uh. Oh shit. Well. I yeah I I have a ton of overall thoughts from this, but we've covered a lot of them. But just this episode as a whole, we talked about the nostalgia's sake, um, but I think it was used in a great way. I think the Ahsoka, the White, was used in a great way. If you're a fan of Clone Wars and Rebels, like I really sincerely don't understand how you don't love this episode. Uh, I just I've I saw so many negative things on social media of people saying. Oh, Disney shills just eat anything up. I'm like, uh. This was incredible. <laughs> this wasn't the book of Boba Fett. This wasn't like, this was incredible. And it's just, it's like 2080, the ratio. For the most part, the reaction online on social media is, oh my God, this was incredible. But there's just those people there that just want to rip it and rip you for liking it and hop in your DMs mm. and report you and a bunch of other weird <laughs> stuff that people do on social media. But mm. this was just, it was just incredible. This was such a fresh and needed win for Star Wars. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I had some of the comments, like as you said, some of the hateful comments don't even have like a lot of weight to them. I'm like, are you just complaining for the sake of complaining? Yeah. It was like the whole episode. Like, if you really want to break it down, you can have complaints, but you'd have to really nickpick to mm-hmm. do it. Like, Overall, this, yeah. And majority of nine eight percent of all Star Wars fans loved it. It's only those twenty percent that are like, "Oh, it's all Star Wars was bad before Disney took over." Right. <laughs> it's just the same thing. Mm. Same thing we ranted about. I ranted about it a couple episodes. It's just it, it's played out, man. It's an exhausting. Yeah. Enjoy it. I don't know. Yeah, that's uh, it. Yeah. You got something, love? Just... Sorry, I guess you can't tell I'm nodding at you. <laughs> well, I mean, I just we talked about most of it, but I love seeing Hayden back. He's been used so well in Kenobi and now Ahsoka. Like Anakin and Vader are pretty well taken care of in Disney Star Wars so far. Yeah, like very well taken care of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this was the perfect way to use the world between worlds. They didn't use flashbacks for no reason or just fan service. It showed Ahsoka the light and gave her purpose again and to stop blaming herself for things she can't control. Her legacy doesn't have to be death and destruction. She doesn't have to follow in her in his footsteps, but at the same time, what he taught her wasn't all bad. He taught her how to be a survivor. And again, in the visions, he taught her how to live. So in the end, she comes out of Soka the White. So it was overall Beautiful. an amazing episode. Beautiful. JD, you got any lasting overall thoughts that this episode has left in your mind? Uh, we just talked about Boba Fett and dude, it's such a day and night difference when uh, the creator mm-hmm. cares about the projects and give a shit and it's not a cash yeah. grab and didn't just say, Ooh, everyone loves uh Boba Fett. Let's make a show. Well, hey, you got a good story, huh? No, 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 no. Start <laughs> shooting Boba Fett. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, Dave Filoni cares about it and it bleeds into the show. Yeah. It feels like Star Wars again. Me personally, I needed this show because like two months ago, I'm just like, come on, what are you doing, Star Wars? Mm -hmm. And then I got, uh, you know, I read Revan, a couple great Ahsoka episodes. I'm fucking in now. Let's go right back in it. (laughs) I I really don't get how you can't have faith in Filoni after this. And again, we talked about how Ahsoka was brought into play. George just told Dave Filoni, yeah, Anakin had a Padawan. He's like, oh. Okay, he just had that dead fish tossed in his lap and was like, good luck. <laughs> he had a Padawan, you know, Ahsoka, make it happen kind of deal. And to see how far Filoni has come with Ahsoka to having this successful live action series about her, all the Clone Wars, all the Rebels stuff. I mean, it's just such a testament to how well Filoni knows Star Wars, how well, how good of an apprentice he is, like you said, to the master George Lucas. And it just... I'm honestly, I just feel pity for those who who are getting mad and saying this is garbage, lazily written on it. I just feel bad. You can't enjoy some of the best Star Wars we've gotten in two decades. You know, you're lost. I don't know what it takes for a personality. All four of us right here. If we don't like something, I don't think any of us are going to go message anybody who (laughs) liked it or spend any time of our day 
thinking about that show that we didn't like at all. We move on, find another show we do like. What? Mm. That makes zero sense, man. Just DMing people about why they're wrong about a show you like just because you commented, yes, this was awesome. <laughs> like, what the hell is wrong with people? Why did you <laughs> like good. that? Why did you like it? It was awful. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to. That's a strange I, I, thing, man. I've actually got a quick question for all of you. Would you be happy that this is the last time Hayden comes back? Yes. Like if this he's was my favorite. This was it. Our, yeah, he's my favorite it's character tough. in fiction, so it it, it works for me. And uh, but I want him back. I'm not saying <laughs> let's close the door. Uh, but if it's the last time, I didn't expect to see him again. You know, last yeah. year I didn't expect mm -hmm. he'd be in this show, so I'm happy with his story if it ends now. I'd be satisfied. Um, they probably work. should. They, I don't know. They can. They could do some more stuff with it as long as Filoni has full range. But I would just hate to see them turn Hayden Christensen into a cash cow and start busting out stuff that was, you know, didn't have soul in it, which I don't think Filoni would let happen. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a safer bet to, to close the book on him now with an incredible going out you know, walk out yeah. song there that he just had a yeah. uh, mm. swan song, whatever you want to call it. I, I think that's the safe bet. Yeah. yeah. This, ha th this is it. Just end it here. <laughs> right. But Caleb went mids and words. <laughs> Cut the damn thing off. <laughs> what about you, Lee? Later. I'd, I'd be satisfied. I'd be satisfied. Okay. If that was the last time we saw him, it was out of the park. We got general Anakin. We got glimpses of Darth Vader. I don't think we need him to come back and i don't know when he would even come back again that would be worth him coming back right in the fashion that we saw right now like it made sense they like said it made sense for everyone it made sense for ahsoka but anything after that don't know yeah, it'd be tough but vader's yeah. got to come back right yeah vader can yeah i, I, I need a lord i need a projects. i need a vader movie just you gotta do oh, lord okay. Sith. Do a cash grab. I don't care. Do one to the Sith, man. I'll be right there. Yeah. I'm not against it. I'm not against it at all. At all. Um, Dave Filoni if, needs to direct it, though. Oh, 100%. Yes. Yeah. He has to do anything moving forward with legacy characters. It has to be Filoni now. Kathleen, step aside. Let Filoni mm. take the reins. Let's just wow. let's just call it how it is. Um, yeah. But, and again, I know we've shouted out Hayden Christensen a ton, but just he played this so well. He played it like the Clone Wars Anakin we got used to in the animated series. His acting performance was so much better than when he was younger in the prequels. He was a rookie actor, pretty much. I mean, he had more confidence in this performance. It was just beautiful, beautiful send off for him. Mm. Uh, so, before we wrap this up, I wanted to ask you guys real quick doesn't need an explanation or anything. What was your favorite aspect of this episode? Was it Dark Side Anakin? Was it seeing Anakin and Snips together again? Was it the Clone Wars in live action or Ahsoka the White? What was your one favorite aspect if you had to choose one specific part of it? Let's go with you, Lub. Open it up. Ooh. I'm going to go with Ahsoka the White. I think, I know I love seeing Anakin, but getting you know the Ahsoka we need for the future of Star Wars is mm -hmm. most important. Like we okay. need, we need her as the main focus going into the movie, and so this was the perfect way to bring her story there. Okay, Lee. I know, I know, it's about Ahsoka, but for me, it would just be seeing Anakin flying a lightsaber once again for one good time. That would, that I know, like I'm moving forward. I'm all for Ahsoka, but just seeing. Him ignite his lightsaber and go head to head. Like it just mm -hmm. took me back to when I saw the original, uh, the prequel trilogy. Straight up. JD. Just that they had the balls to bring Anakin in for a world between worlds scene. So, mm -hmm. and specifically, I'll probably go with uh, the Sith Anakin because mm -hmm. this is kind of Darth Vader's consciousness, but we've never seen Sith Anakin. We've just seen him with the helmet on. And. Um, their dialogue between uh, everything, everything they spoke to each other was just so glued on screen. So hey, everything Hayden Christensen is this episode. Definitely straight up. I'm going dark side, Anakin. Just the line you lack conviction with the Vader sound design edit mixed in between his voice. And we see him with the red saber. We see the product that Palpatine envisioned 
for him initially, for his apprentice. We got to see that person that he envisioned until Obi-Wan cut him into pieces. So just seeing that, I never thought we would see that. I never thought we would see that in live action. Millions put into it. I never thought we'd see Anakin fully together with a red lightsaber. So I have to go with that one. I just went counterculture. Yeah, we get it. Love's a rebel. Now you're going to get cancel cultured. (laughs) (laughs) Hell yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, I think that about wraps it up. It was a pretty lengthy episode, but my God, there was a lot of nostalgia to touch on. A lot of incredible aspects. One of the best pieces of Star Wars we have gotten in decades. So thank you to Dave Filoni. More than anything, no offense to everybody here with me, but thank you first to Dave Filoni. Thank you, Lee, from Lights, Camera, Rant for joining us here today. It was an absolute pleasure to get to have you on for this episode to talk about it. Um, Before you head out, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you, where they can get on your stuff. Plug your show. Show them what's up. I just want to say thank you so much for having me on the show, guys. It is an absolute pleasure and honor to be here, and I can't wait have you guys back as well to come on my show and to find lights camera rant it's lights camera rant youtube facebook twitter twitch uh tinder grinder whatever platform you need uh to come and check it out baby i just got that <laughs> nice beautiful Exposure. well we can't wait to continue to record with you as well not in that way but in an audio format <laughs> uh, i'm cool with it uh and thank you to my co-hosts as always jeremy and caleb thanks for joining me thank you to the listeners for tuning in yet again continue to follow us follow lights camera rant for our continuing coverage on the next three episodes of ahsoka we can't wait to see how they land this ship and we can't wait to talk about it so thank you for joining us here tonight and we'll see you next time on why so sidious a nerd podcast see ya